So I used to be this guy that was Mr. Nice Guy, and even when I got into an argument with someone, or when I really strongly disagreed with a girl that I was dating, I never had the guts and the cojones to actually say something. Now over time, this became a humongous problem in my life, and it made me realize one of the biggest lessons to life that I want to share in this video, which is the congruent language effect. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book Master the Day. Now listen, one of the best ways to figure out how to set and achieve goals and really decode your patterns that have not been working is through journaling. So the first link in the description is for a free journaling worksheet that can help you strategize for how to plan your life going forward to make sure it is epic. So one time I asked out this girl when I was in my first year of college and ultimately she ended up rejecting me, but we ended up meeting up anyway and she asked me in person later that same day. She was like, are you good? Like, you doing okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah no, I'm, you know, I'm totally fine. It's, it's all good. You know, it's, it's cool. And in just internally, I was like, I hate this girl. I hate her guts. I never want to see her again. Screw this girl. I'm out of here. And that was a really damaging thing I later realized. Not even for her, because I was never going to see her again, but for me. Because my language, saying I'm fine when I wasn't fine, is being a liar. And really, you're lying to yourself. But the problem is that you're causing incredible internal damage with your emotions. Because you're not dealing with them. Now another time, I was at work. It was my first professional job. I was trying to do a really, really good job of impressing the people around me by showing that I was a hard worker. Showing that I was serious about the company. And I wasn't just here to get a paycheck and leave. So there was a senior person at this company that was working and they were like, Hey Alex, I got to go out of town for a wedding this weekend. Do you mind wrapping up this project for us? So I was working with him on a project. And basically he dumped all this work, almost like a scene out of office space. Where he was like, yeah, would you mind getting this done for me? Now internally, I was like, screw this dude. Like, the hell, this isn't even my job. This was mostly his work. But I suppressed that feeling because I was like, well... Alex, don't you want to impress the people here? Don't you want to show them your work ethic? Don't you want to just get this stuff done? And so what I said, yeah, sure, was not congruent with how I really felt. And sometimes it doesn't mean that you're like, no, I hate you, screw you at your new job. But what it means is actually having the goal to draw a boundary and say, you know, I really have stuff to do on the weekend myself. Can we maybe do this on Monday when you get back? That by itself creates a congruent expression of your actual emotion. Now, why is this really important besides just not being a nice guy or a nice girl? So what's crazy is I've actually been doing some of my doctoral work studying spontaneous remissions in cancer. And one of the links I've been studying is the link between people who suppress their emotions, have repressed emotions, and people who develop cancer. And one of the things I found was that there are many different physicians and psychotherapists, psychologists, that actually say that cancer is a nice person's disease. That it occurs frequently, more often, in people who suppress their own emotions, suppress their own needs, and they put the needs of others above themselves. In other words, people with weak boundaries. But the other reason for this is that if you are not being congruent with what you say and how you feel, you're generating negative emotions within yourself. And that by itself is gonna have to come out eventually at some point or another, and it sure as hell ain't going to be pretty. So here are three examples of how you can work to be more congruent of what you feel and how you say it. So for example, when you're tired, you could say, rather than saying, life sucks, I hate my life, you could just say, I'm goddamn tired today. Or when you're going through life stress, don't say, it's never going to get better, yeah, meh, meh, meh. I'm in the little mopey phase. Say, right now? Honestly, I feel like shit, and I don't know if it'll get better. Or when you're going through a health crisis and you aren't getting any answers, don't say, it's incurable, no one can figure it out. Give a conscious response and say, right now, I feel hopeless. 
So having congruent language will, number one, regulate your emotions because you're being more honest with yourself. And number two, you're a lot less likely to be dramatic, to be hyperbolic about things going on in your life. And when you accurately describe the things you're feeling, you're not going to put yourself in a negative headspace that's going to make you prone to anxiety or depression down the line. So I hope that helps you guys. As you know, I'm definitely a recovering nice guy. This was a very difficult one for me, but the second I did it, did it regularly, it became like second nature. And it's pretty easy for me to say, this is actually what I'm feeling, you know, 90% honesty, and maybe we can do this instead. So I hope that helps. Of course, if you wanna kinda decode some of the underlying patterns in your life, click the first link in the description, which is for the free journaling worksheet. You'll also get an email every couple days that's a journaling lesson on how you can use journaling to reinvent and change your life. And then come on over and check my next related video right there and right there.